We're now back in the lab environment. Let me open up the browser over here where I'm logged in as Patrick Delano, part of the Curved Rock Fitness Tenant. In my Teams application here on the right, I'm logged in as Vlad Catrinescu, part of the Global Mantics Cloud Tenant. Okay, so what external access allows us to do? Let's say Patrick and Vlad are working together. They are part of different tenants. I can go to the chat here, start a new chat, and then let me enter the email of Patrick Delano. As you can see, I have a notification that Patrick is external. However, I can then go and chat with Patrick. So let me type in something. Hello, Patrick. This is Vlad from Global Mantics, and I had a question about the project. Now, this will take a few seconds to be sent. And as you can see on the Patrick side from another tenant, I do have the prompt. I do see that right in the name, I see Vlad Katrinescu from the at globalmantics.cloud domain, and I do have a big label that says it's an external chat. And after that, I can chat with Vlad and say, for example, sure, Vlad, go ahead. And I'm able to have this chat with external users. I'm also able to call, for example, the external user. Of course, right now I do not have a microphone or anything inside this VM. However, I am able to really have a call between the tenant, so that works as well. Something else that I can do with external access, I can even talk with users on Skype personal. So as you can see here, I'm talking with the Vlad Catrinescu that has the blue Skype logo here. So I'm even able to communicate with users on team personal or on Skype personal. Something that I cannot do, however, with external access is I cannot add Patrick part of a team. I cannot even share files. As you can see, this functionality is disabled compared to let me actually go start a conversation with Vanessa, part of my tenant here. Let's start Vanessa here. Let me just type in a hello to start it. You can see with an internal user, I can upload a document, for example. However, with external access, I cannot do that. External access also allows you to invite external people to meetings and them to join as authenticated users and really get their picture, name, everything directly from their team's profile. But this is it for external access or often very commonly called federation, which allows us to chat and call users from external tenants without leaving our tenants. So really makes for a great way for quick collaboration with external people. Okay, now that we've covered external access, Let's head back to the slides and learn about guest access. We're back in the lab environment. Let me open up Teams, first of all, here, where I'm logged in as Vlad, and the browser, where I'm logged in as Patrick in the Carved Rock Fitness domain. Okay, so let's go to Vlad here. I have a bunch of projects I'm working on, and I have this project Foxtrot where I actually need to collaborate with Patrick. This team has multiple channels, and I actually need Patrick to participate in all of them. So what I will do is I will just go to add member, and then I will type in Patrick's email, and I'm adding Patrick as a guest to this team. It's done. Click on close. Now what happened is Patrick received an email, but if I go in full screen as Patrick now, you will notice that something I have near my picture is my tenant name. If I click on it, I see all of the different tenants where I have been invited to. So I can switch tenant to the Global Mantics tenant. Now, inside the Global Mantics tenant, I will see all of the different teams that I have been added to. So it will take a second, but you see I'm part of the Project Alpha team part of multiple channels. I can even be added to private channels as well as Project Foxtrot, which I have just been added to a few seconds ago. As a guest, I have access to all of the different files part of the team. 
I can upload files, I can modify them, view them using Office Online, and I can even access other parts of the group, such as the planner plan for this group, and people can even assign tasks to me as a guest. I'm like a member of the group, really. This also allows me to, if I want to, I can chat with people from inside the tenant. So, for example, I can chat with Vanessa and say, hello, Vanessa, over here. So, I do have that possibility to chat as a guest. But really, the most important part is that as a guest, I'm added as a member of the team. I can be added to private channels, standard channels as well. And I really have the full collaboration experience inside Microsoft Teams and the Microsoft 365 group. But the only thing that is really annoying sometimes, especially if you have multiple tenants, is the tenant switch. If I have to collaborate with Globomantix, I switch over to the Globomantix tenant, and then I switch over back to my main tenant in order to work on my internal projects. So it gives you a ton of features, but the tenant switch can be a bit of a problem for seamless collaboration. Now that we have covered guest access in Microsoft Teams, let's head back to the slides and learn about the third and final way of collaborating with external users, which is shared channels. Back in the lab environment, let me open up the browser in the Carved Rock Fitness Tenant, as well as Microsoft Teams in the Globomantix Tenant, and we're actually seeing the same thing. If I look in Teams here, you see I'm in Project Alpha, I'm in the Globomantix Tenant, and in the Contractor's Shared Channel. Inside the Curved Rock Fitness Tenant, I only have the Project Alpha team, so I see it here in my own tenant without having to tenant switch, but I only see the Shared Channel. And without having to tenant switch, I can just do a hello everyone here, which will be shown live for Globomantic. So I'm able to collaborate cross tenants without having to tenant switch. In this first example, this contractor's channel has only been shared with me. However, if we take a look at this channel, the Carved Rock Globomantics collab, I actually shared it with a team. So if I go to Project Lima, I have this channel here. And when I shared it with Curved Rock Fitness, instead of sharing it with only one person, I'm able to share it with a team. So everybody in the Project Uniform team can collaborate with everybody in Project Lima that has been given access to the shared channel. This way, if we have a team for a certain project in two tenants, they can really all collaborate together in a single location while also having separate channels in their own tenant for all of the internal tasks. Shared channels only works if both teams are using Microsoft 365, so this is something to remember, whereas, for example, guest access works even if your guest doesn't have a Microsoft 365 subscription, so guest access is still very popular, even with shared channels now available. If we take things to the next level, I can even share a shared channel with multiple tenants. So in this example here in Project X-Ray, I actually shared this shared channel with people from three different tenants. So I have somebody from Vlad at globalmantics.cloud, I have somebody from carvedrockfitness.ca, and somebody from, if I click on Vlad here, VNEX Solutions. So I'm able to create a channel where people from different tenants can collaborate together without having to switch tenants. So here, if I maximize the window, I'm still in the Carved Rock Fitness tenant. I'm not in the Globomantics one. Globomantics here, I don't even have a tenant switch, so I'm in my main tenant. And it makes all of that collaboration super easy while also giving access to things such as the files for SharePoint so we can all collaborate on documents. So this is it for this quick demo of shared channels where really we see the power of shared channels where we can have 
people from different companies collaborate together in a channel without having to tenant switch and you can share a shared channel with one specific external user or with a full external team. Okay, this is the last demo for this module. Now that we've seen all the ways to collaborate externally, let's head back to the slides, finish off this module, and then learn how we can configure all of this.